All right, so in this video, I'm going to be talking about what you can do to improve your resume in order to hopefully help you get hired or find your next job. So to do this, I'm gonna show a couple different versions of my own resume. There's this one, which is my original, and then also this one, which is a slight update that I made when I was thinking about making this video. So this particular resume is the exact resume I submitted to get hired at a major tech company. So while that's a good thing that at least got me in the door to the interview stage, I also think there's a ton of mistakes and things that I could have done better when looking at this resume. So I'm going to talk through those and why those matter. I'm also going to talk about three main points to consider when you're trying to improve your resume. And the first one isn't necessarily about your resume and only your resume. It's more of a life thing in general, but just focus on the things that you can control. Because maybe when you're thinking about applying somewhere, you're worried about not having enough experience or not having the right degree or a plethora of different things that you could be concerned about that'll ultimately prevent you from submitting your application or submitting your resume to someone. And what really matters is that you know that you are qualified to do the job as it's written out. And if you feel that way, you should feel good enough or confident enough to submit your information forward. The worst thing that happens is you just don't hear anything back which is ultimately a lot better than never even having the opportunity to potentially work somewhere that you want to work. And also when it comes to something like resume design, the person that reviews it matters the most out of anything that could possibly happen. And you can't control what that particular person cares about or what information that particular person is looking for. So just keep that in mind. You can control the things and present yourself as best as you're capable, but ultimately there's a lot of things that'll just be out of your control. So don't worry about them more than you have to. But first up here, a big thing when it comes to resumes is you want to make it really easy to read and really easy to scan through because whether it's a hiring manager or perhaps a recruiter, they don't have a lot of time to read every little detail on your resume. And they're also probably looking at a lot of resumes in a given day, especially if it's someone that's a recruiter professionally, they might be looking at dozens or even more of resumes every single day trying to find the right person. So in my particular resume, my old version, I actually think this is fairly hard to scan. There's a ton of information here. It gets a bit overwhelming. I can't necessarily tell where I should be focusing my attention. And also just the way I focus on information, I don't think makes a lot of sense when I'm trying to communicate a really concise message. So up at the top here, I have a full on paragraph explaining why I do what I do and why I like doing it. But I don't think most people are going to take their time to actually read through this paragraph. They're probably going to go right down here to the experience section and then see where have you worked? Do you have relevant experience? And does that match up with what I'm looking for? So in the updated version, I went ahead and shortened the top section down to a single line as opposed to a paragraph, because maybe someone will take the time to read through that and just get the gist of what I'm trying to do. And then for the experience section, it goes right into that as opposed to a large skills bar. So this way you have a quick brief introduction about who I am and what I do, and then right on to the experience. And also in my old version, I actually led with the place that I worked as opposed to the job that I was doing at the place that I worked. And ultimately, at least most people are probably going to care more about what your role was as opposed to the particular place where you worked. There's always a possibility that you work somewhere that someone else has worked or somewhere that has a really good reputation where someone would care a lot about that. But if the role doesn't match up, none of that really matters. So my update, I put the role first, followed by the company. So that way, the importance or the focus of the information is about what I was doing as opposed to where I was doing it, which is generally the right strategy for most people to take. And also when it came to this large skills section up top, my thought process when I made this is someone could easily scan it and see like, oh, here's the skills this person has. Here's the stuff that they could possibly do for me. But it becomes a bit overwhelming and a bit jarring if that isn't the first piece of information that you necessarily care about, which is more likely the experience. So in the update, I actually put that down here near the bottom. So my actual relevant work experience was all up top. And aside from that, just focus on basic hierarchy of information, create large section titles that are bold and stand out from the rest of the page. So it's really easy to see what is what. So the experience in this one's really big. The skills is really large education certifications. I do think all that was handled well in this resume. It just feels a bit too tightly spaced together. There's a lot of information to parse through. So it, it becomes a little bit heavy. So I just did my best on my really quick update of this. So I wouldn't say this one is a final perfect resume and there isn't a perfect resume for sure, 
but I do think it's a step in the right direction of making this feel a lot less heavy. For lack of a better term, looking at my previous one makes me feel a bit stressed. There's a lot going on and I don't want to feel stressed. And I don't think anyone wants to look at a piece of paper and feel stressed. So I just try to make it as easy to scan as possible. And also my YouTube channel is focused on a lot of design information and you might be a designer who's trying to improve your resume. I will say, don't go and add a bunch of crazy design stuff to your resume to make it stand out. You might be tempted to put in illustrations or do really fancy layouts to break out of the mold or look like something that's out of the box in quotation marks. But the person reviewing your resume will likely just find that annoying because I talked to the recruiter who actually found me at my present job. And he said one of his biggest pet peeves is when people do really obnoxious things with their resume that ultimately make it hard to see what information matters or hard to find the information that he particularly cares about. So do keep that in mind when you make a resume. Use your portfolio to show your fancy design skills. Use your resume to communicate your experience. Consider this an exercise in really good layout design above anything else. Don't try to get too fancy. In mine, I did use a little bit of color, and I did use a little bit of color to also break apart the different roles or places I've worked. But in my updated version, I actually removed that because it ended up feeling a bit busy and distracting. So I just left the colored bar at the top to maybe grab someone's attention a little bit. But past that, I kept it really simple about the type, about the content. And the last of the three tips that I have is to tell your story. So what does that mean? How do you, how do you tell your story? When you consider writing your resume, as far as the experience, the information that you put below a job, you might be tempted just to list out your core responsibilities or essentially describe what you were doing, all the different little pieces. But a lot of people forget to communicate how that improved the company or what actions your particular work led to that helped the company grow or help the business do better. Because when someone's hiring you, it's with the goal of your time and the money they pay you will ultimately bring a return on that investment. They'll make more money by the work that you do than the money that they're paying you. It's sort of like the basic principle of any business. So you really want to communicate if someone chooses to hire you, how is that going to help them? Why should they care about you? Why should they care about your skills? If you don't communicate how those skills translate into action or improvements or the business becoming better, it's going to be a really hard sell. So for example, one that I think I did really poorly was this job for a user interface designer. So I wrote concepted and designed interfaces for current and future tools and customize interactive online tools using HTML, CSS, and less. So reading this now, I look at that and I think that's cool, but why should I care? What did that do to actually help that business? How did that help the customers? How did that help the business improve profits or whatever, whatever the metrics might be? There's nothing to back up or validate the work and the quality of work I was doing here because it's just a statement about what I was up to. There's nothing about the action. And perhaps a better version of that, so you can see what I'm talking about, is this one that says contributed research and curation that helped grow the market to 1.3 million customers, 5.1 million members, 28,000 shops, and 2.7 million products in six years. So that both explains what I was doing, but it also explains how that helped the company and how my actions ultimately tied into that business's story. So another example of that was supported user engagement initiatives that helped grow the community to 1 million members and 10,000 shops by 2016. And some of these two might not be tied to hard metrics because that isn't always a reasonable thing for what your particular role might be, but you can just talk about how that impacted the people that work at the company. So this one, for example, improved user first culture by regularly presenting insights and creating user shadowing sessions for the team. So if you're a hiring manager and you read that, you know that this person is likely confident or at least able to present to the team, which is a valuable skill. And also that you're working to involve the team in your work, which teamwork or collaboration is often a big thing as far as the soft skills that hiring managers look for. And a soft skill is basically something that isn't like I know a language or I can program. Those are hard skills. Soft skills tend to be the more intangible stuff about creating a good work environment for you and everyone around you. But those are important skills and people are increasingly caring about how to hire people with really strong soft skills. So do keep that in mind. 
And while my updated resume doesn't necessarily cover fixing all those errors, that is something that I would do before I submitted this to someone else. I'd make sure that if I'm telling about my skills, I'm then backing that up with as much evidence as I possibly can to really tell my story. So the person reading this can know a little bit more about me, what I do, why I do it, and why that will help them do whatever they do that much better. But that's really it for this video. When it comes to writing resumes, submitting resumes, it's not a lot of fun trying to craft a resume, at least to me. This isn't my favorite version of designing anything. It's just a bit stressful because you're trying to do your best and you know how much importance some people place behind resumes. But just focusing on the things that you can control, as well as making sure your resume is really easy to read and then telling your personal story about how your work can help those around you, will help you put your best foot forward when you're trying to get hired at your next spot. So I do hope this video was helpful. If it was, feel free to hit the thumbs up button. If you have any comments, you can feel free to leave those in the comments section. Maybe you're someone who hires and has further critique of what I've done for myself, and I'd definitely welcome that. But that's really it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and best of luck creating your next resume.